I'm 27 years old, almost 28, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I declare myself to you, I am homosexual. And, uh, uh, you know, I realized I was homosexual when I was uh, 14 years old. Uh, at that time, I used to live in a small village town near Naples, Portici. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I was, at that time, was developing my sexuality. And I just, and I just thought, thought, wow, I am lesbian. So, a lot of enthusiasm. And, um, but, uh, but I still remember the first time I declared myself to my father. Uh, and uh, we were visiting Rome, actually. And we were walking nearby Montecitorio, and I thought, what a place to say, hey, daddy, I have to tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, daddy, I am lesbian. And uh, he answered, mm -hmm. okay, Barbara, I already knew that, and uh, you know what? We like the same things. What we like? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and he answered, Barbara, wake up, we like women. Okay, daddy, so good, great, great, great reaction. But, uh, <laughs> but since that, actually, uh, there was sort of silence between uh, me and him, but... Uh, I thought that uh, that kind of silence was positive, and I thought, uh, great, my father uh, actually accepted me. So, uh, wonderful idea. I came out of the closet in my high school, and, uh, but it, was, uh, it, it wasn't a great idea, actually. And uh, because it was a sort of shock, uh, I, uh, I realized now that I was the, the scoop in my high school. I was, uh, I was actually the, the victim because in a few days, everybody in the high school knew who I was. And uh, they told me, Barbara the lesbian, Barbara the lesbian, I, I have to offend, I'm a lesbian. Why Barbara the lesbian, okay? And, um, you know, I started to uh, interiorize a sort of homophobia, not in the sense that uh, I hate myself as, homose as homosexual, but I hate myself because I, uh, I wasn't able to express my sexuality. I wasn't able uh, to fall in love with a girl. And uh, fortunately, uh, years passed by, and uh, the revenge starts from here, from Turin, uh, when I moved here six years ago now, and I work for uh, work, I'm a volunteer work, uh, <laughs> for Archie Gay, <laughs> and uh, I go in the high schools and I bring my experience as a homosexual, and uh, I wanted to do the same thing in front of you now. And the left? Okay. No? So, a little bit of, of uh, theory, I think, uh, about the identity and actually the sexual identity. But first of all, I think it is very important. Uh, I want a, a question for you. Uh, who you are? And I think that the first uh, things that comes in, into your mind, into my mind, is the classical and wonderful ID. So what an ID tells of you, uh, it tells of you about uh, your name, the surname, the color of your eyes, the date of birth, uh, the place of birth, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I actually think that we are more than I than I did. So, I think that, uh, um, that, uh, okay, um, what express better who we are is our, uh, is our sexual identity. So, imagine a sort of cake 
divided into four parts and you have biological sex, gender identity, gender expression and sexual orientation. It's simply who you are. So first of all, biological sex refers to the biological status of an individual and uh, uh, it may be categorized as male or female. And obviously there are a lot of um, uh, factors, for example, sex chromosomes and uh, genitals. Gender identity is uh, much more complicated because it uh, refers to uh, the one sense of oneself uh, of an individual as male or female. So, when the biological sex and the gender identity are not congruent, the individual may be identified himself or herself as a transsexual. Gender expression refers to the, uh, to the way an individual acts to communicate with the, uh, communicate his or gender within a given society. And finally, sexual orientation uh, refers simply to the sex uh, to those uh, people who we are uh, sexually, romantically and psychologically attracted. So, I am a lesbian and I love women. A gay man loves men and a bisexual love both sexes and an heterosexual love the opposite sex. Uh, I, uh, as I hope, every one of you know that homosexuality is not a disease. In fact, in 1993, the World Health Organization uh, removed homosexuality from its list of disease. Okay, a scoop, I'm not sick. I'm not sick, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> And as I hope, every one of you, since the fact that I'm not sick, I'm not choosing to be homosexual. I do not choose to be a lesbian. So, just a question. Why should, uh, should I choose to be lesbian living uh, in a part of, of, of a minority, uh, living without civil rights? Why? Why should I choose that? Okay, I'm, I'm not different. And uh, so just a little bit of, his, of history. Uh, there was a guy in the 50s, uh, his name is Alfred Kinsey, a scholar uh, who did some researches. In 1948 and 1952, he published two volumes about the sexual behavior. Uh, he analyzed the sexual behavior in the human female and the sexual behavior in the human male. And the result was, uh, okay, what is, what is, okay. Uh, the result was then the 10% of males, so we are talking about the 50s, uh, were more or less exclusively homosexual and the, the range of uh, two, 6% of women were more or less exclusively lesbians. Now we are in 2013 and uh, our ISTAT in 2011 published a research entitled uh, uh, Homosexual Population in Italian Society and the result was that one million of the interviewed people declared himself or self being homosexual or bisexual. And uh, the uh, curiosity was that men declared themselves being homosexual more than women. Why? Uh, I think that uh, kind of personal consideration because uh, Italy is still a chauvinist society. And uh, in general, the, the female figure is still stigmatized uh, by everyone, first of all, by the media. 
and uh, there are a lot of uh, stereotypes around the lesbian uh, er around the lesbians for example just left uh, uh, with me please all lesbians have short hair okay do i i i, I do have short hair and uh, all lesbians have tattoos okay i have tattoo but i don't have piercing i do not have piercing and uh, i don't think i'm a tomboy what do you think and uh, and uh, this is the, the the funniest one because uh, a lot of people think that all lesbians are lesbians are so because they've never gone with a man okay a scoop i i've never gone with a man because i don't like it simply this okay uh, so i uh, just few images so of beautiful and famous women uh, for example, we have uh, a great uh, TV presenter, Ellen DeGeneres, or Jodie Foster, a great director and actress, uh, Billie G. King, a very famous tennis player in the 50s that I love, uh, Paula Concha, okay, don't question about that, please. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a famous singer, Mel Melissa Etheridge, and uh, you know, you know what? They are all declared lesbians. So, oh my gosh! And um, now, for you, I have a, um, a, a, a clip of uh, a, of an Italian doc. Uh, this is the trailer, actually, and uh, it is entitled Le, Le Lesbiche Non Esistono. The lesbians do not exist. Ah, per me è stato un colpo di fulmine. A me è piaciuto subito. Ci siamo piaciute tanto. E dopodiché. Nella sua famiglia lo sanno, ma non si parla. Certo, eh, lo sanno. Cioè. Sicuramente Andrea è all'estero, perché in Italia per me non ci sono diritti. Non ci sono diritti per la famiglia, per i figli, non ci sono diritti per, per costruire un futuro. Io ho problemi a, a dire che sono lesbica, non ho problemi a vivere il mio essere lesbica. Ho problemi a dirlo perché non sai mai come potrebbero reagire, ma piuttosto perché eh, non vorrei mettere in, in difficoltà l'altra persona. Did you realize that the, the, they were all lesbians? Okay, okay, that's clear. <laughs> uh, so, uh, thank you for listening to me and uh, thanks to TEDx uh, Pro Procetta for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.